What's up? Welcome back to another episode of Cookie's Fish Room. Uh, it's Norm here on the couch joining you once again, for those who don't know me. And today I will be covering emergency medications and what's important to have, basically to cover any scenario that you might come across for anything treatable. So, in the hobby, it's not always gonna be rosy and good times, and a lot of my Facebook members know this, and we tend to have a lot of issues that arise, especially when you keep live bearers, and it seems like guppies are very susceptible to diseases and fluctuating um, parameters. So any sort of stress on live bearers tend to make them break out in diseases and all sorts of diseases. So you always have to have your emergency meds ready to go before you actually have the fish because sometimes the time difference in waiting for these medications to turn up after ordering them, as some of them aren't easily found on the shelf in stores, that time difference of a few days to a couple of weeks can make a huge difference in what happens with the recovery of that fish. So today I'll just cover the main medications that you need, and this is in no particular order and you might find them very similar to what we have in our quarantine process. So number one medication is aquarium salt. Now, I would be adding this into my tank with every water change. It does a whole lot more than people think. It does not affect uh, snails. It does not affect catfish. Um, it, and it doesn't affect plants. So there's a misconception out there that uh, salt is bad for these, but you got to remember everything used within the right dosage, within the correct amount, will not harm anything. If you overdose on anything in life, it does have a negative effect, of course. So keep in mind what the recommendation is on the box to dose and stay within that amount and you'll have zero issues. Now, I personally use aquarium salt with every water change. It's always in my tank. It helps with the slime coats of the fish, any issues with scales, recoveries from um, external illnesses. It's great to prevent things like ick and velvet, even some uh, parasites like anchor worms. If you've got a nice thick slime coat, you will not most likely get these sort of issues. So keep it with you. Epsom salt. Now, this is not to be added into your tank. It's great to have on hand in case you're having prolapse issues or um, indigestion, blockages. It, it's really required with dropsy. So have your Epsom salt ready to go to make those baths. And remember, do not exceed more than five minutes at a time with your baths. Have it in three. You're, you're better off having it in more, more baths than having one or two long ones have more frequent baths throughout the day. I usually recommend three baths, five minutes a bath, and um, teaspoon to a litre, or usually a tablespoon to a flat tablespoon to a gallon of water. And remember, always use the water straight out of your tank. Don't use fresh water. And the reason for this is because of the parameters, the sensitivity of the fish to going from one temperature to from one pH level to another can actually make it worse than make the fish get better. So keep Epsom salt on hand. And talking about dropsy, Marison 2. Now, Marison 2 slash tetracillin, for those who can't get Marison 2, because it's not that easy to grab in Australia, um, I think we can get Blue Planet tetracillin off the shelf in some stores. That can be used in place of it, and it's great for dropsy. Now, a lot of people think, oh, dropsy can't be fixed. Um, it can't always be fixed because if you have liver or organ failure that's causing the um, fluid buildup inside the fish, it most likely will die. And that's when you start seeing, you kind of see the signs, you know, the scales are protruding or pine coating really badly. The fish is not eating. There'll be a lot of signs there that your fish will not make it. And it's time to really just make it comfortable for the inevitable. So... Um, I think that it's great to have on hand. Marison 2 will look at things like dropsy, 
um, Popeye is another one and you look at things also like the smaller infections that you can look after inside the fish. So um, have it on hand, any type of missing scales issue, injuries, it will be very handy to prevent infections. So prevention is always better than treating the problem. Remember that. And that's why we use the quarantine process. The next one I have on hand, which over here covers a whole broad um, amount of illnesses is triple sulfur, or I'll use blue planet trisulfur. That even covers ick, it will cover uh, columnaris, it will cover other infections, it will get rid of that bacteria, that gram negative bacteria in particular that make it really tough for the fish to live. So have that on hand. Um, that's probably the most important medication out of all of them. It will treat other infections, um, similarly to Marison 2, but not exactly. It's good to have them both, um, as Marison 2 doesn't work quite well with gram-negative um, issues, like ulnaris again. So have your sulfur-based medications. Remember, there's a whole heap of them. You can get, um, because it all depends on what country you are and how easy it is to get. In Australia, we can get the Blue Planet Trisulfur, which I prefer to use. You can get Seachem Sulfurplex and you can get API Triple Sulfur. So all three of them are great. Whatever you can get, have it on hand. Uh, Ick-X. Ick-X is great for Ick, obviously. Um, it's, I can't remember if it's a copper-based treatment or not, but it's handy to have. Make sure you have that on hand if you can't get the the Blue Planet Sulfur um, treatment because I'm not too sure if Sulfurplex and Triple Sulfur does cover ick. So if you can't get the Blue Planet, if you're in a different country than Australia, make sure you've got ick X on hand. It is the best I've found for ick treat out of all the ick treatments. Grab it. It's awesome. And last of all, Levamisol. Now, so this, remember, this is in no particular order of what's important to have. You've got to have them all, I recommend, on hand, ready to go. Levamisole will make sure your parasites and worms are gone. Um, it's a complex treatment, so make sure you read the instructions. And if you don't have a fish-based version, you can use cattle, goat, uh, chicken, poultry, all sorts of animal um, versions of it. There's liquid uh, dewormers. As long as it, the main ingredient, the highest amount, is levamisole, you can use it. And if, you don't, if you're not unsure about how much to use in your tank for fish or how to use it, jump on Cookies Fish Room in, on Facebook and put a post up and we will gladly help you work that out. All those things should be in your emergency cabinet. It is vital and will make a huge difference to your fish's well-being. I personally have all these already because it's part of my quarantine process. There's a video for it further down the list. I fully recommend watching that video if you don't. The most important thing in the hobby and in your fish keeping journey to make sure you don't have to deal with emergencies is your quarantine. So have a look at ours. We do cover most, if not all the, um, possible, all the illnesses and diseases there are out there. Have a look at it watch the video and have those medicines ready to go if you don't have them. So this video is really important to to make sure that, um, and it does not just cover just guppies. Barry the beta here will testify that it does cover most fish, if not all fish. So um, guppies are often uh, often referred to on my videos as it is what I keep with along with endlers and a few other live bearers as they're my favorite personally. So if you've got a, um, uh, any sort of fish, I do recommend grabbing those meds. Thank you once again for joining us on the couch at Cookie's Fish Room. I hope everybody is well and um, are keeping safe. And we're going into autumn here in Australia, so things are starting to cool down finally. I hope the Northern Hemisphere is enjoying the warmer weather finally. Um, everybody in Texas is safe now. And if you have not yet hit that red button down below, it says subscribe, please do so. And hit the notification bell so that way you know when we come out with a video that helps you. Thank you once again for joining us and catch you next week. Bye for now.